Praise the living God. I am Pastor Lillian coming to you with the word of the Lord today from Kampala Community Church. We are delighted today. It's a wonderful day the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad indeed. For sure we have seen his grace and his goodness. Last week we had a powerful moment with the men as they were talking about husband, love your wives. I believe you are blessed. But as we continue looking into that talk, Many of you have been reaching out to us saying, yes, husband love us, but do they know their responsibilities? And today uh, I'm delighted I have a man of God, one of our church leaders that is going to take us through to know what is uh, that which God wants us to do as men. But before he introduces himself, you're going to open up with a word of prayer. If you don't mind, you can close your eyes and we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We want to say that you are a good God. Father, even as we talk about men, continue to lead and guide our footsteps. So God, let us know exactly what you want to speak to us today. May your word come and be a lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path, O oh God. May your presence be evident even as we speak, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you touch men out there, Lord, King of glory, that they may learn to know the right from wrong. God, teach us your ways that we may walk through them, God. We bless you and exhort you. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 We want to welcome you again. You're welcome. And uh, let me allow our guest to introduce himself today. Hello, um, my name is Simon Peter Oromoit. Um, I'm married to my beautiful girlfriend. Um, so far we have finished six years. And God has been good to us. And I'm so much humbled to be able to minister and be part of this uh, program. Today we are privileged. You're going to talk about the responsibility of a man. You know, out there, the many responsibilities people have in life, but specifically, you want to look at the responsibility of a man. And in order to get in depth of that, you need to know the purpose of God for a man. Simon, what is the purpose of God for man? Yeah, um, it is something that is very, very important for us to understand that uh, as human beings, when you need to do something, you need the resources to do that. Mm. If I need a chair or I need to sit, I need a chair where I can sit on. So mm. I, that means I have to make a chair Available. and the purpose mm. of that chair is for me to sit on it. Mm. Now, if I stand on that chair, it means I'm abusing it is purpose mm. or why I made it for. And it can be a table or a plate or a phone, when you have a phone, you know it is for communication. Yes. That is the main. Whenever you see a phone, what clicks in your mind is communication. Mm -hmm. However, when this property is used in a wrong way, it means that it has gone through abuse. Now, when God is de was designing man, he had a purpose for man. Mm. He had a responsibility that man had to fulfill. Mm. And now, you could look at the chaos in the world. Those chaos are a result of man not standing in his initial purpose or in a plan or a responsibility that God had entrusted him. Mm. Now, we are all lost in our own world. True. And that is the origin of all the chaos and personally it gives me pain when I go back to the scripture mm. and realize that communities today are going through moral degeneration because man is not fulfilling his responsibility. Mm. Families are falling apart because man is not standing in his God-given purpose. Mm. And what happens? We are in chaos. We are fighting. We are struggling. But as men, we need to go back because the responsibility that God entrusted with the man is so great. And, and when you understand it, then you will have a future. You will have an idea. You will have an understanding of every decision that you make. 
you're right. We need to go back to the purposes that God designed mm. for us. In the beginning, when God was creating man, there was a divine purpose. Yeah. I know the world perspective has its own purposes. But we are looking at the divine purpose mm. of God in the yes. life of a man. Yes. And do you know what is amazing, Simon, that God first created man? Mm -hmm. uh, why not a woman? He first created a man because there was a, a unique design purpose that yeah. God had designed mm. for a man. Yeah. Now, the, the verse, that the, the chapter that we have just read, mm. the first time I read this, my heart melted. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's so, it, it's it, so profound. You know, it, it defied way. Now, when we go to verse 19, it says, For I have, this version says, For I have known him, known who? Abraham. Mm. I've chosen Abraham. Mm. In the order, why? That he may command his children and his household after him. Hey. You know? We always run to blessings. You know, God called Abraham and that he may him. be a blessing. Mm. But Abraham had work to do. And where was the foundation of that work? Right from home. Yeah. You see, I, I've been in ministry and I've worked in a ministry. But if my ministry is not flowing well right in from home, home, then you're not, you're not, it's not well with you. <laughs> Right from home. Mm -hmm. You see, Abraham was to touch the whole world. Yes, let's move to nations. The father of nations. Let, let's go, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go and preach the gospel. That is okay. But the thing is, if we don't deal with the foundation, the primary, the core responsibility that God gave Abraham, mm -hmm. in this case, the, the issue was Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. But he's reminding him. About his family and his, <laughs> his own family. Children. I said, yes. In order that he may command his children, not only his children, mm. and his household after him, mm. to do what? To do what? That you is you the see, I, I always feel guilty mm. that being a minister, th there is a way you, you always look good to people outside. Mm. You know, you present the picture. A different picture, actually. To people outside. Mm. But the people at home ah, they... see something totally different about Simon. You look nice and you become nice, but when you go back home, you become a terrorist. <laughs> you, you see? You now be, You were police in your own home. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know? And, and at times we start and minister and say, hey, I wish people know really what this guy is talking about. Mm -hmm. I wish they knew. For us, we understand him. For us, we know him. We live with him. We know everything about him. So the primary responsibility is as we work towards fulfilling God's purpose, mm. if we want to see a better world, mm. we have to build better families. As men, we have to take a lead. Abraham was married. True. But this calling was specific. The God told, I can't hide this from Abraham. Mm. Even though I can't hide this from this couple. Mm. No, he said, I can't hide this from Abraham. Why? He has to command his children. It doesn't matter how you deliver the message out mm. to there. How you, how, you how you counsel others. How you counsel others. Mm. But the thing is, how are you dealing with, you know, with what is inside your, inside your, inside home. your home? How are you reflecting the mm. character of Christ in, in your, your family? What is your wife seeing from you? you yeah. know? One person said that uh, when, when, when husband is preaching, mm. is the, is the wife said, I rebuke him. <laughs> or the wife is say glory to God. Yeah. Yes, that is the mm. right man. He's yeah. speaking the right heart of mm. God. Yeah. So what 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 is that the children are seeing? Are you showing Christ mm. to the children? Mm. Are you teaching them? You see, this is work. That, as much as we give work to you know business time to business mm. you know you go for a business trip for a month yes. and you're busy with a lot of business engagements and you spend a lot of time doing that 
-hmm. And when you reach home, you're totally tired. Mm -hmm. You don't even have time or, or even a little strength to open a Bible. For with your you. family. So we yeah. abandon the primary responsibility and that go, God and go on to the second responsibility. With us. Yes. yes. And then what happens is that by the time we realize a mess in our households, mm. it is totally late. Too late. It is very late that you can no longer redeem the situation. Then you 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 you, you live a life that is that, that is miserable. Then you ask yourself, why did I even work hard? I thought I worked hard for the well-being of my family. Generally, you're working hard. Yes. You want them to feed well. But you, you want. <laughs> you know what is amazing, Simon? Yeah. You're mm. not leaving a legacy yes. for your mm. family. Because when you read here, yeah. the Bible clearly brings to my version, I'm using NIV version. Yes. It says, For I have chosen him so that he would direct his children mm. and his household after him yes. to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like after him, mm. what legacy are you leaving? Yes. What line? Mm. Uh, uh, can we tell that Simon passed here? Mm. How can you do it? It's mm. your family. Yeah. It has to start with your family. Mm. That's when we tell, oh, Simon's son is actually doing exactly what the father is doing. Yes. There, yeah. there are many out, good men out there that have really left a, a, a legacy. Mm. And as we see right now, their sons are doing uh, the work of God yeah. because the fathers left mm. a legacy yeah. to them. And yeah. God was reminding Abraham, mm. no, I'm not hiding anything. And one thing he was not hiding yeah. was him taking responsibility yes. of his family. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that is amazing. So it is, it's a big challenge to men. Mm. And it pains me, it challenges me when man is not standing this cause mm. when man is not pursuing this cause when man is not aligning to the purpose of God mm. and and God says now he commands us after him that they may keep the way of the Lord mm, the way that's the work. way of the Lord that's what you know like. one of the stories we have heard from this COVID situation is interesting you know parents have come out and say you know I, I thought I knew my children enough, mm. but <laughs> this lockdown has revealed to me a lot of things that I didn't know about my family. But how can you know your family when you have over 10 hours in a day working outside? And the time you have is just one hour or a few minutes you with Simon, your children? We go back to those homes to yes. sleep. Have you ever realized? Most yeah. of your day is spent mm. out there. Yeah. You just go back to that home mm. to sleep. One time I was talking to my friend and said, don't you think the house we bought it to sleep in? Mm. You don't have time. Yes. Children leave at six to go to mm. school, come back ah, ah, at six. Mm. You eat food yeah. and the thing you can do, you have to sleep early because yeah. the following morning mm. you have to wake up early. Mm. But now we thank God for COVID. Mm. But even in the situation where there is no COVID, mm. you can't run away from your responsibility, yeah. Simon. Yes. That, that is the thing. That is the thing. And I really believe that God brought this COVID also for this purpose. <laughs> I, I thank him. I thank him. I was talking to my yeah. husband and I said, mm. this has been the best moment with me and my family. Yeah. I can know who smiles a lot. I know who loves a lot. Mm. But before, I didn't know much about myself actually yeah. and about the family. Can mm. you imagine? Mm. So we, we, we really have, we, we get a lot here. And our, what does God say here? That to do righteousness and justice. And mm. that's the instruction. Now, I'm just thinking that God will best, before he says anything, and say, Simon, I entrusted you with this family, mm. with this woman and with these children, and with these a, other people. Yes. Have you been a responsible man? A good steward. Uh, yes. Of what I <laughs> gave you. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, that, that worries yes. me. Another thing that worries me, that yeah. you're going to give an account mm. of how you lived. Exactly, yeah. Can you imagine, as you're giving that account, mm. your family is not on, on, among the accountability you're giving. Mm. You're giving accountability of other people. Mm. And that's where we failed it as leaders. Yeah. And that's why we failed it as ministers. Yeah. Because most times we tend to look into other people's families mm. and we don't put touch. You know, as you're pointing these fingers, mm. this other one is looking up to you saying, mm -hmm. now Simon, tell me. Yeah. What is going on with you? That's why the Lord brought it clearly to Abraham. <laughs> it was very clear. And, 
And in this responsibility, this is what I get here. The discipline of our children totally mm. depends on a man. True. We always blame women. My wife has spoiled these children. But <laughs> whose assignment? Was this Sarah's assignment? No, it was no, no, no. Abraham's Abo assignment. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> you, because you God it. would have mentioned the Sarah in that statement. <laughs> yes. But he's bringing yeah. it directly to mm -hmm. Abraham to, to do Abraham. it. Yes. Yeah. So if the things go wild, if things don't work out well, you and me as men are the first people to blame. When Adam fell into sin, who initiated Eve? Who did God talk to? By the way, talk about that. Yes. When God came in the Garden of Eden, yeah. he began by calling uh, uh, Adam. Adam, yeah. Adam, where are you? Poor mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything. The woman <laughs> had, had put him in trap. So yeah. you, you could be put in a trap as a man mm -hmm. of not carrying your responsibility because the women are caring. Yeah. But when the Lord comes back, mm -hmm. He's going to call on you like he called Adam. I, I like in case of NMS. NMS, you are the one to, <laughs> you are the to, one to answer. To, to be responsible. <laughs> so that's why we're saying we need to go back to the purpose. Mm. If we understand the purpose, if we understand why God created you as a man, mm. you will be able to know and to deal with any other responsibility that you have as a man. You will not struggle. But because we are lost into the world, we are lost into the generation of wickedness mm. that is full of darkness. We are confused. We, we don't know where to go. We probably have even read books, so many other books, that say if you do this, things will work out. You have read those books, but they have not helped you. Why? The thing is, you have not gone back <laughs> to, to, to the one who created, who designed you, and ask him now, why did you design me? Why did you bring me into this one? Now, God put a condition there mm, mm. that if Abraham stands in this purpose, that means I will bring this promise into fulfillment. Uh, uh, then you bring me to this other question, Simon. What is God's promise for a man? In other words, the promise comes if you've done your part. Yes. So, some of us want to ride ourselves into mm. the promise. You know, the promise of God says yes and amen. If you believe, yeah. all things are possible. But have you done your part? Mm. You've not done your part. Yeah. So, Simon, what is God's promises for a man? Now, when you look at this text we read, it is very clear God in the Bible promised to bless a man. He did. And he promised to make him a great nation, a nation. Now, if, if, if your family legacy ends with you, you are a total failure as a man. The nation can't be built. You have not fulfilled that, yeah. So that means God's promise has not really been fulfilled in your life. Mm -hmm. Because the you should be gauged based on the welfare of your children and your children's children after you. Mm. Can they serve God even when you are gone? Can they draw meaning out of this life and fit in God's purpose even when you are gone? That is how you define this promise. Because mm. the same, now this promise, when you go back to verse 16 mm. and 17, what does it say? Uh, 16, let me pick from 7. And the Lord said, shall I hide this from Abraham that I am doing? Mm. Since Abraham shall surely become a great, great and a mighty nation. Mm. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in, in him. Now, <laughs> whenever God looks at a single man, he doesn't see him as a man, he sees him as a nation. A nation. <laughs> Oh, goodness, huh? that is a lot. Yes. You are carrying a lot in you. <laughs> yes. So it's, it's, you should look beyond you. Beyond you. Because you're in you, yes. you're carrying a lot. Yes. So many times we neglect the fact that you're not on your own. Mm. In you, you're carrying a nation. Can you imagine a nation, Simon? <laughs> you're either destroying a nation yes. or you're either building up a nation. That is really, really sounds great. Because if, if you don't, you know, fit into the promise, if the promise is not fulfilled through you, it, it means 
that there is no nation. You have destroyed the nations. There is a generation that is yes, left there behind. is a generation that is being affected. So uh, there is someone said this: if men become men, the world will change. When men throughout the world recover their voice, release their power, and recapture the joy of following God's call to become authentic men, the very nature of Christian community will change. Now, the same guy said, if we are to, to become a generation of mentors and have a culture filled with men of character mm. and wisdom, men that can lead the next generation into true godliness, then we must give careful thought to what men will look like when Christ is formed in them. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, so it is something, I read this guy's writings and it challenged me. It is called Dr. Larry Crabb and his book was The Silence of Abraham. <laughs> I mean Adam, <laughs> The Silence of Adam. So it spoke to my life and when I connected it to the scripture, the fact is, if men stand in that position, you see God doing great things. Mm. That's now when we come to the fulfillment of, of promises of God. Mm. Now, God is not doing much. Or we are not seeing God doing what he would love to do in our generation. Because men are not standing in their rightful he position. Have, he doesn't have a standing ground <laughs> yes. for the promise to be fulfilled. fulfilled. But once you stand and you're there, yes. you make it easier yes. for the promise to become real yes. in your life. Mm. The reason why the promises of God are not prevailing in your life mm -hmm. is because you've not stood in the, in the purposes that God desires you to stand in so that the promises of God may avail themselves. To yes, you. yes. And that was very clear. Mm. Because that responsibility, say, God was very clear, saying, now, so that I may break or fulfill this promise to him, to Abraham, because he has stood in that. And I was wondering, as I was reading First Peter chapter 3, verse 7, I was asking myself, what was the Spirit speaking here? And I connected it to that verse in Genesis. Because it says, husbands likewise, dwell with them with understanding. With who? With your wives, with your family members. Mm -hmm. Giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life. That, take note of that, that your prayers may not be hindered. And that speaks of the promise. It does, it does. <laughs> Okay. In the first place, when you know that a wife is a weaker vessel, yeah. it gives you an understanding yes. that there is need for help. Mm. Because already something is weak, yeah. there is something that needs to come up mm. so that the, those, those people may be strengthened. Yes. And, and I love the way the, uh, God brings it in, the, in, in First Peter. Yeah. Because once you know that mm. your wife is the weaker vessel, yeah. that means you have to stand your ground mm. and do your part as a man. Yeah. There's no way you're running out of the thing. Mm. You have to stand up and do. And you see the promise which is there. Like yes. That, that, that the Lord has, has granted mm. that promise after you recognizing yes. that you have a weaker vessel. Mm -hmm. You need to go and go into the purposes mm. of God. So that we are heirs together of the grace of what? Life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you are seeing the grace flowing and overflowing in your house. Why? You as a man, you as a husband, you as a father, you, you are standing in your God-given position. And you are fulfilling that purpose that God has placed in your life. And I challenge men, and I pray that we as men in this generation will discover the purpose so that we may be able to walk in the promises of God. We, we want to live in a better world. When you see Uganda, corruption and so on, mm. but that corruption has started from the family. From the family. It has not started when that person took up the political position or office, no. It has started because 
we have not trained our children in, to walk in godly morals, to walk in the ways of God, to walk in righteousness. If the fear of God is fully in our families, mm. we shall live in a better society. You have reminded me of the scripture that says that you reap what you sow. Yes. You cannot expect to harvest what you did plant. Yes. So if men stand in their positions, I, I can't even repeat what Simon has said because those have been powerful words. Mm. But men, do us a favor. Stand in your position. Play your part. And we will have a better world. And we will have a better church in all things. Yeah. Men, stand up. Don't forget the foundations of God. Mm. Abraham had a promise. It was there and it was standing. But there was work to do. Yes. There is always work to do. Uh, for you to see the promises of God being filled in your life. Simon, what is this last thing you say I cannot uh, go without <clears throat> saying the thing to man? Well, I've really said a lot. I'm so much challenged. And the thing that I've always pursued as a person is, how do I fulfill that responsibility? Right from the core primary responsibility that God has given me as a man. And I always walk with this conscience, at times experiencing guilt when I follow short of what God expects me to fulfill. I cannot say I am there yet, but I'm struggling. I'm in this journey to be where God wants us to be. Now, it, it cannot just be fulfilled by your human effort. You need the grace of God. You need the Holy Spirit as a man. You need to go back and study the manual, the Bible, the scripture, and pray and say, God, how can I stand in this position? Because I believe, and the scripture clearly shows, Abraham inquired of God. He created an altar wherever. He had an altar right from the family where he would seek the face of God. And clearly God would give him instructions to follow. But we are blessed today that we have a manual. We have the Bible that we just need to go back and study and walk in that purpose that God is calling all of us. So I'm being challenged as a person and I need God to help and I pray that God will help me yeah. to serve that purpose so that I see the promise. Yeah. Wow, wow. Thank you, Simon. I can't repeat those words. You've really uh, spoken them well. You, uh, you have helped us to yield today into the purposes of God as men. And uh, don't shift the blame on yourself. Uh, you can still work on yourself. There's still room. There's still room. Uh, you can just start today and begin to be that person that God desires for your life. In you, there is a divine purpose of God that he, the, the why He created you. He set you apart a time like this to go and do what you need God to do in your life. Thank you so much for giving us time. We would love you to share this message to a person you feel that they need it. We are on YouTube at uh, Lillian Taylor and on Kampala Community Church page. We love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. See you next time.